Hey, and welcome back. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, the shoes that I wore this week. We're going to look at a, a couple reviews of uh, updates of shoes that uh, I purchased last year and the year before. We're going to have a special section on shoe care. This one is all about breaking in new shoes. Um, and then I'll do some updates to the uh, pipeline and to my wish list and talk about those. Here we go. Welcome to Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Here we do unboxing videos, we discuss general shoe knowledge, we do worth the price videos as shoe reviews, and we will do shoe battles uh, comparing shoe to shoe so that you can understand the differences. I also speak to experts in the field. So let's take a look at the shoes from this week. We're going to start out with two from Gaziano and Girling. Uh, the uh, Hatch Grain um, Thorpe, and then the Smooth Leather St. James 2. Super excited. These are great shoes. Always a pleasure to wear. Um, this is the Stefano Bemmer. Uh, it's the 6349 on the TX Last. Love this shoe. And this is the Enzo Bonifay uh, 2745. This is actually inspiring me for an MTO that I'm talking about later. And then we've got some of the classics. Uh, really in Shell Cordovan, looking at the 2210 by Alden. The Leeds uh, by Alan Edmonds in this beautiful British racing green. Uh, then we move on to the uh, shaved shell cordovan for the 5th Street boot by Alan Edmonds. This is number 8 shaved. Uh, this is natural shell cordovan uh, from Carmina on the 531. Uh, beautiful PTB. Uh, this is one of my first MTOs, which we'll talk about later. The Cornwallis in bourbon shell cordovan. Uh, this is the shell cordovan by, all, uh, by Alan Edmonds. This is the Bradley. Uh, and then uh, the classic 990 from Alden. Uh, this is number eight, but it's gotten a lot of sun, so it faded a bit. And then this is the 101375 by Meerman in Cognac Shell Cordovan. And then uh, lastly, this is the Patrio Adelaide. M I've always wanted to try hatch grain shoes in Shell Cordovan, and I haven't been able to find them. Uh, I found a dealer who's willing to do an MTO for me with uh, Enzo Bonifay. And so this is that MTO information. Check it out. Now in this section, I actually have the video is going to be a little bit weird. And my head is cut off. That is so you can see the shoes. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Today we're going to talk about a update on a pair of shoes that I bought in 2019. This is the Allen Edmonds Cornwallis. Uh, this is a very special shoe. It was my first MTO shoe. And I put on a, um, this is in Bourbon, Shell Cordovan, uh, which is not normally available. I, I, I chose that uh, chose that combination and, and had them put it in Shell. I asked them to put a natural um, storm welt. So the welt is actually a natural color. And then I had them leave the edge, also natural. And then I had them put JR soles on it, uh, which are a little darker um, and uh, had those in leather. Um, and, uh, Overall, it's, a, I think, a very good look to a shoe. This is also a double sole. Um, they normally come with a single sole. So it really changes the look of the shoe. Uh, the, the split reverse or storm welt uh, really kind of has a little bit of a difference. And then, of course, just the coloring itself, uh, I think, blends really well. So again, and OIS for contrast uh, natural stitching as well, uh, which was uh, something that I came up with also. Now, um, they don't do uh, this type of customization often. Uh, what they allow you to customize will vary from time to time. Uh, but as you uh, get more and more into the shoe game, uh, this opportunity comes up more and more. And um, this has led to me actually trying to design a shoe uh, in shell, a split toe that I'm doing uh, now for, um, uh, for uh, uh, Enzo Bonafé, for, for uh, uh, one of the makers. Uh, I designed it myself. I decided I was gonna do it for myself and decided to put together a group. Uh, there's a very limited number of slots available, only um, only 12. Uh, so we only have enough leather for six shoes uh, with uh, Russian bourbon um, uh, bourbon grain, um, shell cordovan, and then another six in uh, like a hatch grain, shell cordovan, and also in bourbon. So thought it was kind of a cool thing to do. If you're interested, I posted it as a story on Instagram, uh, which you can check out. Um, uh, I'll also, uh, uh, put it in my highlights so you'll be able to see it on Instagram as well. 
or always just uh, shoot me a comment and uh, or email me at Wisconsin at wi shoe guy at uh, gmail.com and I'm happy to uh, share the details with you so um anyway back to these shoes you know um, when when you do an MTO and you do something totally different you always have the question of what it's gonna be like um, how, how you're gonna feel about it etc and I decided that I was gonna do these um, they've really um, held up quite well uh, you can see that, um, you know, when you wear shell cordovan, a lot of times the creases will get this uh, little white stuff in it. That's just oil from the shoe. And if you just take a, uh, like a boar bristle brush and you just go over it, um, it really calms it down significantly. And uh, that's, uh, that's just part of the, the routine. Brushing shell cordovan is, uh, is a large part of the care. Um, you don't necessarily have to put new product on every time. I don't. Um, I only put product on every six or seven times. Um, most of the time, all I do is I hit it with a boar bristle brush and then with a horse hair brush um, to uh, really buff out the shine. So that's it. That's the care. Um, you know, the shoes themselves, these are JR soles. Um, for having, you know, a year and a half almost of wear, um, and I don't wear my shoes a lot because I have a lot of them, um, there's very little, um, you know, wearing down on the shoe. Um, you know, I, I need to refresh the edge dressing here, um, but the, uh, the actual toes are not wearing down at all. I don't need to install plates or anything. Uh, overall, it's just doing really, really well. Um, and, uh, you know, everything on this is, is pretty good. Um, you know, uh, as I look at the shoes themselves, you know, I've never been really happy with the stitch density at Allen Edmonds compared to other makers, but I have to admit the, uh, the shoes are staying together really well and the stitches are not loosening up or anything like that. I mean, from a, from an overall standpoint, they're doing pretty well. Uh, there's a little bit of a kludgy spot here where, um, the stitches came together, uh, for the welt, but, um, at the same time, uh, nothing is structurally unsound. Um, the lining of these shoes is a really nice veg tan leather and um, feels really good um, and, and allows you to, uh, allows your feet to breathe. Uh, so no, uh, no challenges there. Overall, you know, I'm just really happy. This is the first pair of Shell Cordovan shoes from Allen Edmonds that I ever paid full price for. That is something that you need to understand about MTOs. The shoes are not in stock. Shoemakers put shoes on sale because they're in stock and they're taking up space and they need to get rid of them, when you do a made to order, you don't get a discount price. So that's something that you need to kind of keep for an expectation. Normally when you do made to order shoes, uh, there is a surcharge and that can vary from 20 to 30% depending on the brand. And that will sometimes get waived uh, either when you do it in a group, uh, groups can, group minimums can vary from four to six shoes, um, depending on the brand. Um, like it's four with uh, Enzo Bonifay uh, for Alden or for uh, um, Enzo um, through Solgarb, uh, but it's six at Crockett and Jones. Okay, um, so that, at least that's my experience. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but as you uh, you know tend to uh, tend to look at it, um, things just uh, you know you you just you're not going to get a discount on the shoe. The only thing that they'll discount is that made to order fee, uh, and sometimes you know makers will have like specials. There are a lot of specials um, going on during COVID, uh, like almost the entire year last year, uh, Gaziano and Gerling waived their MTO fee. Um, and, um, you know, so, so that, that, that is not uncommon, but it's also not something you can count on. Um, so it really depends on, on what they're doing. So sometimes they'll have a sale, but they'll sell it, you know, they'll waive it for one shoe, not any shoe. Um, and uh, then they'll also have differences in, in what they're looking for. So anyway, the, uh, the net net of this, these shoes are in remarkably good shape uh, for, um, you know, for being a year old, for um, having, uh, you know, the time. Uh, I just want to clean up this shoe here because, you know, as I look at it, it looks like, you know, oh man, that, that's got a lot of, you know, gunk on it or whatever, but it's not. It's just, it just needs to be brushed. I, I went for a walk with it and it got, you know, uh, you know, dusty and, and, the, and the moisture, you know, the blooming on shell happens because as the shell flexes, the oils actually come to the surface. And so, you know, you just take a good brushing and it, uh, it gets it right off. Uh, if you don't like the way it looks uh, while you're wearing it, uh, the only thing I can recommend is waxing it and you have to be really, really, really 
uh, gentle on the amount of wax you use because wax will do the same darn thing. So you, you gotta be careful. Uh, generally speaking, most guys just allow it to, to be part of the patina of the shoe. So, um, and all shell blooms, but some shell blooms less than others. And I've never figured out a rhyme or reason for it. So that would be something to, uh, to keep in mind as well. So anyway, um, I just, I love these shoes. I feel like they're, they're doing great, uh, you know, after a year, year and a half of wear. And, uh, you know, they really feel like they're gonna, they're gonna work. I'll probably resell these in, you know, 10, 12, 14, 15 years, um, based on, based on the way the soles are wearing down now. So thank you so much for watching. So as uh, we're looking at shoes and um, what, uh, how they're uh, coming along, this is a pair that I, uh, that I brought into the rotation early last year in 2020. Uh, this is a pair of Vass uh, Budapest um, shoes on the um, New Peter last. Uh, really, really solid shoes. They have um, a, a custom patina um, and the, the guy who did the patina also did the, uh, the toe plates on them. Uh, the, um, the patina is really holding up nicely. Um, it does require some care. Um, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, polish that's on there, so I've got to uh, brush them and repolish and stuff from time to time. Uh, you know, as I look at the shoes themselves, uh, they're vast, right? So the, the quality of the leather is pretty good. Uh, there are some creases that have developed um, right here, um, right here. Uh, the, the creases on the top are really, um, and the vamp are really, hardly noticeable at all. They're, they're really good. Uh, it's just in the sides, really where you have the layers of leather, uh, where, where there is some creasing. Um, you know, as I've been doing more and more shoe reviews, I've been getting a better feel for how well the skiving is done on the leather. And uh, you can see the skiving on these are, is actually really good. And um, that helps a little bit with the creasing uh, right at the edge there. But um, the crease does go across the brogue line and, and, and show some there. So while they, uh, while it's not so bad in that one particular point, um, it, is, uh, it is noticeable. Now, is that bad? No. Does that mean that there's a problem with the quality of the leather? No. This is just um, the way that uh, the shoes are aging. And I think that as you look at uh, a pair of shoes after they've been in the rotation for a year, and these are just about exactly a year. I did the unboxing video about a year ago today. Um, you know, they're, uh, they're, doing, uh, they're doing quite well. Um, really, the, the the, the lining is, uh, is really solid um, and they, uh, they do well. Now, I don't wear my shoes a lot, right? Because I have a lot of them. So um, probably wore these uh, in the last year about as much as I would wear, like if I had a five shoe rotation, as much as I would wear them in a month or two. I have worn them a lot because I like them. So, um, you know, I would, uh, would kind of keep that in mind as well. But, uh, you know, just as a second look, really feel like the, these shoes um, have uh, done well. You know, now I've said some things about Vass in the past where I wasn't really super thrilled with them, but as I look at these and as I really think back to my experience wearing these, um, you know, it's actually pretty, th these are really good. These are JR soles, um, you know, and the soles are really feeling pretty good. They feel great on the feet. And, um, you know, my, I think part of my problem has just been fit. And my fit on these is just a little bit of a challenge. And I think it's because I have uh, collapsing arches and um, I never realized that I did. And so that changes the way VAS um, fits. Um, VAS is uh, pretty well precisely made for people with, um, or this last is pretty well precisely made for people with, uh, you know, kind of perfect feet. And so I get a little bit of this going on um, right here on this. And uh, so when I wear it, it kind of bulges out in weird places and, and, and is not, uh, it's not the best. Now they're not uncomfortable at all, right? So uh, you gotta take it kind of here and there. Um, they are asymmetrical and they do, um, they do fit the foot well. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, kind of getting used to that and finding the right last within Vast for me, um, which would of course be much easier if I could go to a store. But, um, can't do that now. So, um, that is what it is. So anywho, uh, they're in pretty good shape. Um, you know, any questions, just give me a shout. Thanks.
So last uh, video that I want to include today is a, um, what do you do to break in shoes? How do you, how do you handle trouble spots? What are the different things that you do? Um, and I've got a, a, a pair that I bought and that I did an unboxing for um, this year, so it hasn't been long. Um, I've worn them three times. And, um, you know, first getting my foot into them was really, really hard. I needed to use a shoehorn and I needed to really, really work the shoehorn to get them on. Um, and I, you know, I have a lot of shoehorns and I probably should have used this one. Uh, this is a, um, an actual uh, piece of horn, uh, like from a steer. Um, and uh, it looks like it's plastic, but I don't think it is. Um, and the other... Uh, the other one that I have is uh, is I actually I know is a piece from a horn, but it's like really big. It's like that big around, kind of. Uh, let me maybe that big around. Like it's the size of a finger. It's it's not. I, it's buried now, so I can't get it. But um, you know when you, you it, it helps to use a smaller shoehorn in order to get them on. And then um, part of my challenge is once I get it on, I feel heel slip and it's really really tight across the vamp. So. Um, you know, wearing it is really the best thing for across the vamp. Now you can actually spray like a vinegar and um, water mixture, usually 50-50, on the inside and the outside of the shoe. When you wear it, it helps the leather stretch. I don't like to do that, especially not with suede. That makes me a little nervous, even though I know suede is, is really strong. Um, I just, I don't like spraying it with water or any kind of liquid. So I don't, I don't really do that. I just wear it and I allow it to warm up, which means you gotta wear it for a couple of hours and then you've got to put some miles on it. Now you can see this sole used to be like super shiny and now it's, uh, it's starting to, to get some wear. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, and then I've done that. I also keep trees in them and I, I like to have trees that are pretty tight. So you can see that. Um, and then when you take the tree out, um, the other thing I've done is um, there's a trouble spot for me, and I think this is just me, but I'm sure somebody out, out there watching has the same issue. I have a spot on my foot, it's right about here, and it like sticks up a little bit, and so it hurts a little. Um, and so what I did was I took this, which is an Apple watch band, okay? It's one of the ones with a magnet, right? So I just take this and I, I make sure that the, uh, the parts that are funky are over there, okay? So that I want this to be too thick, okay? And so I'll put this in, try to make sure that it is in the spot where um, it's tight. And I put that in there with the, uh, with the shoe tree so that it actually is a little bit area above that area right where my foot hurts um, so that it uh, rests. Now I've done this, I've done this twice. I started with one layer, now I've been doing two layers. I could even go um, more layers, but candidly, when I wore the shoe today, that part did not hurt. So that's good. Now, <laughs> what did hurt though, was the heel. And um, so it's rubbing, it's rubbing parts of my feet raw. I went for about a mile walk, just walking the dogs. And um, I started, I, I mean, I can tell I'm, ge I'm getting blisters like right along here. So it is, um, which is weird, because normally you get blisters up here. Um, so I, um, I feel like there's something uh, going on there, but what you do is you wear it, you do a short walk so that you can tell where the rubbing is going to be. And then I picked up this on Amazon and you can get these at Walgreens. Um, but this is a really small bandaid, um, that, um, uh, is a kind of, what they call them blister cushions. And, um, you know, you get like a package of seven for like 15 bucks at Walgreens, but I bought like two of these packages. So it's like, um, I don't know, it's maybe 50 total um, for the same do like same bucks. Um, you get this and you can put these over the areas that are getting um, rubbed. And this really, really helps. Uh, it stops it from rubbing more and it uh, um, doesn't allow your foot to actually get damaged. Uh, which is always a good thing. So um, gives you a, a really good opportunity to be able to uh, um, pull in uh, uh, something different. So um, those are the things that I recommend for um, for helping to break in the shoes. Um, really, the only thing that really works is time. And, uh, you know, as you build up a little callus on your foot uh, for things like that, um, and the shoe stretches to really conform to your foot, um, those things just work themselves out. So... Uh, I've said before, I struggle with loafers. I'm using loafer as an example. Um, I've done the heel patches for all kinds of different shoes and it's worked its charms. 
Um, the trick is to make sure that you're not walking so much that you tear up your feet before you uh, um, need to put the, the blister patches on because your feet are already damaged and it's still gonna hurt to walk. And it doesn't really matter what shoe you put on, it will hurt. So anywho, uh, this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Thanks for watching. That is my guidance on how to break in new shoes. So this has been an exciting week on the pipeline front. I've acquired a few new shoes, uh, most of them MTOs, which will take a while to arrive. Uh, the first one is this beautiful MTO here, which is in hatch grain and smooth shell cordovan. This is number four. Uh, I've also acquired these boots from the Gaziano and Girling sale. Or these are not boots, they're shoes. Uh, then I've got the um, uh, suede uh, Centurion Capris from Macariello uh, and the Kudu uh, Adelaides from Macariello that I had done in a special patina, which is right here. So uh, you have to use your imagination a little bit. There aren't any pictures of it, but I'm excited about that. And I also participated in the boot MTO from Meerman, uh, which I did these boots, but I did it in a Norvegese welt and with this grain. Super exciting. So I had to put some of these what's next on hold uh, just because uh, there's only so much money in the bank. But I'm super excited to see what they come out with. And uh, hopefully the Jim Jun uh, website is actually up again soon.